In this video, I'm going to take a look at a very important aspect of property law in Ireland, and that is the question of rights of way. Rights of way may not occur or may not be such a big issue in a housing estate or in uh, a village or a town where there is clearly a road abutting the property that you might be thinking of buying. However, if it's not the case that there's a road abutting the property that you are thinking of buying and if indeed it's a right of way then you need to be very very careful that the right of way is registered and that there is a proper and valid right of way because the law has changed in this area in the last number of years since 2009 the land and conveyancing law reform act of 2009 has changed the law in this area you need to be very very careful particularly if you're buying property Okay, let's take a look so at the essentials of rights of way in Ireland and what is this, the legal position. A right of way is an easement. So an easement is a right over the land of another which attaches to land. So the um, most common easement that you're going to come across is a right of way. It will attach to, say, the property that you're buying. It has a right of way over somebody else's property. Well, they'll, then the right of way that you're getting is appurtenant to your property and it's registered as a, um, a right of way on your property folio and it's registered as a burden on the other property folio so that there's no confusion about exactly what's going on. The most common uh, easement, as I say, is a right of way, but other rights of way, or sorry, other easements would be the right to have a septic tank, for example, on somebody else's land. This might be common enough where a farmer might send, sell off a site and there's a house built on it, and the next thing is, they need a little bit more space for the septic tank and to put it in the field next door. Um, clearly you need access to and from the septic tank in order to clean it out and service it and so on. So you may have an easement to the septic tank, but again, it's a sort of a right of way that should be registered and registered on the folio. Another easement will be the right to cut turf. You'll see it again in a rural area. Certainly where I live around here in Kildare, there'd be lots of folios with rights to cut turf on various pieces of bog around the place. There's quite a lot of bogs around Enfield and Broadford and Carberry and Johnstown Bridge. So if you're buying or selling property, if you're buying a house, you need to ensure that there's legal access to come and go from the property. Now you might think that that's an awful stupid thing to say, but in fact, you may have access to and from the property and that may be as plain as a pike staff. However, there may not be legal access. In other words, if there's a dispute or a row, the legal basis for you traveling to and from your property may be called into question. And if that's the case, then you need to be very careful that you're not buying a pig in a poke when you're buying a property. If it's rural, it may be accessed by right of way. That means that the road abutting the property that you're looking at isn't necessarily in charge of the local authority. So if around here, the local authority is Kildare County Council. The road outside my house, I know, is in charge of the council. But I do know a road just down, or a smaller road, just down past me here, which is actually a right of way. So if I was buying a property down that road, I'd be careful enough about checking out the right of way and the various folios that it serves, etc. So basically, if your property that you're thinking of buying is a rural property, and it's serviced by a right of way, it means it's not taken charge by a local authority. You need to check that there is right of way. You need to check also that it is registered. Now, certificate of title, this is sort of a, the system that is involved in a solicitor acting for a purchaser. Basically, a solicitor will undertake to get good marketable title to the property and will then certify the title for the bank. I've done another video on that. Uh, take a look at it. Uh, on my uh, YouTube channel but you'll see the certificate of title system etc and take a look as I say and, and you'll see how that works but essentially a solicitor who's acting for a purchaser will need to certify the title for the purchaser's lender that's assuming that the purchaser has a lender and isn't a cash buyer if the purchaser is a cash buyer he needn't worry about the bank what he does need to worry about though is his cash in other words if he's buying a property that's landlocked or doesn't have a right of way or doesn't have legal access then he needs to reconsider so no right of way register will cause a big problem because a lender may not allow the purchase to go ahead how will the lender know because the solicitor acting for the purchaser will write to the lender and say look this property is landlocked there is a right of way but it's not registered are you happy to proceed the lender may say no 
So the purchaser needs to be prudent and careful in any event because clearly a landlocked property is not a good idea, not a good investment. What is the solution to the problem? There's three ways to get a right of way formalized. One is a deed of grant of right of way. So if your right of way is going over somebody else's property, the person who owns that property will give you a grant of right of way. It's a formal deed and you can register it with the property registration authority. You may have to pay for it. You probably will have to pay for it, but it's, it may still be a very good investment. The other two ways to get a right of way are by court order and registration with the property registration authority. So deed of grant is straightforward. Once the deed is signed by both parties, it can be registered with the property registration authority and you're off to the races. The second way is a court order. You must go to the court, you must apply, you must prove that you have used the right of way um, by prescription for over 12 years. Now I'll look at prescription just in a minute, what it actually means, but essentially you must use or you must show use of the right of way for over 12 years. If the court order is granted, then you can register that with the property registration authority and again, you've sorted out your problem. The third way to do it without going to court is cheaper, but maybe slower, it depends, will be to apply to the property reg registration authority directly. You can make an application under section 49A of the Registration of Title Act 1964. You need to make a detailed and comprehensive application to the PRA, the property registration authority. The PRA will then contact the affected landowners. If there's no objection from the landowner or owners, then they will go ahead and register your right of way application. Again, you've solved your problem. However, if there is an objection, the right of way or the property registration authority rather won't touch it with a barge pole and you'll have to go to court. The question of prescription arises then, you need prescription for an application to the property registration authority or uh, for a court order. So you have to prove that you are a user as of right for a minimum period of 12 years normally. So a user as a right means that you've used this right away without interruption, without force, without secrecy or without the consent of the servient owner. So that's a prescription. This is important as it means if you're using the land with oral or written consent of the servient owner, your claim to a right of way will fail because the basis by which you're using this so-called right of way is actually with the consent of the other landowner. Therefore, you don't have a right of way. You have their permission, all right, but that doesn't mean that it's going to continue. Once a right of way is granted, it can be registered as an appurtenant right on the folio that benefits from the right of way. That's the property, hopefully, that you're purchasing. And it can be registered as a burden on the land over which the right of way runs. There's a time limit for registration since the introduction of the law, our Land and Conveyancing Law Reform Act of 2009 and the Civil Law Miscellaneous Provisions Act of 2011, you must register your right of way before the 1st of December 2021. This date was originally shorter, but it was extended by virtue of that Civil Law Act. My name is Terry Gorry. I'm a solicitor in Enfield County Mead. My contact details are there. If you feel that this video is useful, give it a thumbs up down below. I really appreciate it. And you may be interested in subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you're not, that's fine. You might know somebody who is. Thanks for watching.